Hi everyone, my name is Angela Pontius. I'm the Director of Clinical Operations and Patient Advocacy at Raw Pharmaceuticals. Raw Pharma is a small biopharmaceuticals company based in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and we are developing a new drug called Xylucaplan for complement-mediated diseases like MG. And currently we have one study open to enrollment. It's a phase three clinical trial in MG, and uh, we are working with sites in the Chicago area, uh, in Indiana, and I'm trying to think what else is close by. I think those are the two closest areas, and Ohio. Um, and I just wanted to thank Joan and Conquer MG for the opportunity to be here and to share any information I can about clinical trials and hopefully um, answer some of the questions that you have. So I'll hand it over to my colleagues. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for uh, inviting us here. And it's a great pleasure to, to talk to you and also to hear from you. Uh, the patient voice is, is a key part of running uh, successful clinical trials. So my name is Marie Helen Jomen. I'm a physician I'm working at uh, also a small biotech in Cambridge. There are a lot of them over there, uh, Massachusetts. Um, I'm not a neurologist, but I am an immunologist. And as you know, uh, yeah, myasthenia gravis is, is an uh, immune disease. Um, we are really focused on, on immunology and immune diseases, so we are running a number of programs for various uh, autoimmune diseases and also other diseases that are not uh, autoimmune. And I would be happy to answer any question you have at any time um, and to hear from you. Thank you. Hi, so I'm Amy DeWorth. I also work with Momenta, um, and I'm the clinical site liaison. So I am tasked with going out and I meet with support groups and I support our research sites. So we also have research sites. We're conducting a phase two study um, also in the um, Chicago area. Um, and so we'd love to get input as we develop protocols as we move forward. So we look forward to your feedback and providing information about the study that we're currently enrolling. Um, and connecting our research sites with, with interested participants. So thanks for having us, we're so glad to be here. Hi everyone, my name is Jenna Casey. I'm a medical research liaison with our Genics. Here, I'll move up here so you don't all have to turn your head. Um, our Genics is a clinical stage biotechnology company that is based in Ghent, Belgium. However, we do have an office in Boston, Massachusetts. Um, my role as a medical research liaison is to act as an extension of our home-based medical affairs team and we work with healthcare professionals and support groups such as yourself in the MG community. And so right now we do have a phase three trial with our lead investigational agent, Afgar Tigamod, that is a global multi-centered uh, clinical trial and uh, yeah it's a pleasure to be here and like everyone else we look forward to learning from you all thank you okay so uh, thank you so much for the opportunity uh, for me to be able to just tell you a little bit about raw pharma and Xyluca plan so as I mentioned earlier, Raw Pharma is developing Xyluca Plan in uh, rare complement mediated diseases like MG. We're also studying Xyluca Plan in other diseases like immune mediated necrotizing myopathy, which is under the myositis umbrella, and also ALS. And a few things that we have currently in preclinical studies, so not currently in the clinic, um, we're looking into an XR formulation of our drug, so a complement inhibitor that would be dosed um, less frequently, so once a week or even less frequently, and also an oral complement inhibitor as well. So I wanted to tell you a little bit about Xylucaplan, which is a self-administered subcutaneous macrocyclic peptide which inhibits the complement C5. What does that mean? <laughs> so, um, as Dr. Malik mentioned, complement is part of your innate immune system. Its job is to basically destroy bacteria or foreign bodies that come into your system. And um, one of the things it does is kind of like punch holes in those foreign body walls or cell walls, and it destroys them. 
So that's when it's working properly. In MG, uh, it unfortunately gets in in inappropriately activated and um, causes the same destruction at the neuromuscular junction, that area between your nerve cell and your muscle cell. So here, uh, what we're showing is uh, the complement uh, system. And what I'm going to talk about is a classical pathway. And in that pathway, there's all these different proteins involved. They're all labeled C1 through 9. I know someone had a really creative way of naming them, but um, what we're going to focus on is the C5 protein. So what happens when uh, in complement is C5 um, actually, when, it get, when complement, complement gets activated, C5 cleaves or breaks into two proteins, C5A and B. And C5B says, well, I'm going to join up with my friends C6 through 9 and form kind of like link up and form this hole. And within that hole is um, the, that's what causes that destruction. And what xylucoplan does is it binds to C5, so it prevents that cleavage or that splitting to happen and um, that we inhibit complement from happening. I'll um, ask, question, ask for questions in a little bit. <laughs> OK. Um, all right. So Xylucoplan is, as I mentioned, a, a quick self-administered um, subcutaneous injection. So because it is a macrocyclic peptide, it can actually be packed into a really small volume. So the volume of our uh, drug dose is just about a half a milliliters, or if you think about a real life example, a quarter of a thimble would be full of that volume of drug. So in a quick five second push, um, patients can, in the convenience and privacy of their own home, take their drug each day and have control of their um, uh, MG each day by um, administering their drug. I'm not going to go over this slide because Dr. Malik did a great job already going over MG background. Here is a slide, um, so it's kind of busy, but basically what we pulled together was we worked with the MG registry to look at uh, the severity of um, MG in patients. And then over on the right here, we're looking, we looked at um, a survey that was done with approximately like 300 to 400 patients about their satisfaction with their current treatment. So the MGADL is a, an eight item assessment. I think some of you have probably already had to kind of use that scale. Basically it's eight questions about how your MG is affecting you each day. A score of zero is perfect. It's great, MG is not affecting my um, daily activities, and the score of three means it's really affecting my activities. So you can have a total score of zero to 24. And um, what we say is moderate disease would be um, an ADL score of six or higher. And um, basically what we're finding in that registry information, I believe it contained approximately 1,500 um, patients worth of responses. Uh, over 50% of patients feel that their disease severity is very moderate to severe. And then with that survey information, what we're finding is that patients are on current therapies like prednisone, mestinone, and et cetera, but they don't feel like they're frustrated. They don't feel like it's necessarily working fast enough. Um, they're, it's unpredictable. They don't have enough control over it. So what we're trying to do at RAW is develop a drug that is um, that provides that kind of control and quick effectiveness. Where we see xylucoplan and complement inhibition in the future is we hope to be able to bring it and have it more available earlier on into the treatment paradigm. So, um, you know, a lot of times you have to go through all these different steps in order to get approval or treat it on a drug. Um, that's a complement inhibitor or other things. So you have to go through steroids, immunosuppressive therapies, IVIG and Plex, and you have to fail in order to get that approval. And what we're hoping to do is collect data in our clinical trials to be able to provide that treatment earlier on into your treatment. 
So quickly, I'll just give you um, an overview of our phase two data. So we started enrollment in our phase two study in December of 2017 and completed enrollment uh, in July of 2018. And the last patient to finish the 12 week treatment was in October. And so we announced this data in December of last year. So the patients that we enrolled in our study were patients with generalized myasthenia gravis with ACHR pos or positive for ACHR antibodies. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier, um, this is kind of the target of Xylucoplan is the complement activation and we want to inhibit that. So that's why this is specific to ACHR patients. And we required patients, so a key word that Dr. Malik mentioned is eligibility. Uh, one of the eligibility criteria was that patients have a quantitative myasthenia gravis score of 12 or higher. So the QMG score, I don't know if some of you have had to be tested for it, but it's a 13 item scale where your doctor will test different parts of your body and see how strong parts of it are. So um, things like raising your arms for a certain amount of time, um, seeing how strong your muscle strength in your face is, and things like that. So that's a score of zero to 39. So we wanted patients who had at least a score of 12 or higher. We did allow patients to have um, treatment on their standard of care medicines like corticosteroids and immunosuppressive therapies, mainly because we do, did have a placebo arm and we wanted to ensure that patients didn't um, have any type of treatment so that they would at least have that while they were on the placebo arm. We didn't require patients to be refractory or to have failed other therapies, again, because we want to bring Xylucoplan earlier into the treatment paradigm. And then patients had to be vaccinated against Neisseria meningitis. And if you recall from earlier, I mentioned that complement is part of your um, immune system. So because we're turning your immune system off at a certain point, we wanted to, or we need to make sure that patients are vaccinated against certain infections. And so we're taking the extra step to ensure that everyone who receives Ilucoplan or any type of complement inhibitor receives vaccination against meningococcus. The endpoints or basically the primary goal of what we want to see at the end of this study is the change in the QMG score from baseline to the end of the 12-week study. We wanted to see how much that score reduced while patients were receiving study drug. And then a few other things we looked at were the change in the ADL score, the MG composite, which is kind of a mix between the QMG and the ADL, and a quality of life um, MG score. And we actually ended up enrolling um, over our targeted 36 patients, we enrolled 44 patients. So we were really encouraged to see the uh, interest from the patients and their, uh, their doctors. So below is an image of the uh, study design. So every study has a design. Um, the way that we designed our study was to have a screening period. That's where we checked the eligibility criteria. And once patients were eligible, they were randomized. So um, kind of like a flip of a coin, they were randomized into three different arms, um, a higher dose of Xylucoplan, a lower dose of Xylucoplan, and the placebo arm. So for 12 weeks, patients self-administered their drug at home. And then after the 12 weeks, they had the option to continue into an open label extension period where they, everyone received Xylucoplan. So I'm not going to go over this table in detail um, and bore you, but basically these are the baseline characteristics of our study population. So what we found was that even though a lot of patients were already on um, standard of care medicines like pyridostigmine, corticosteroids, and immunosuppressive therapies, their QMG score was still very moderate and to high, so an average of 18 to 19 across all patients. So um, I think that just kind of goes to support that uh, slide I shared earlier, where patients are on other treatments but still feel like there's, it's still not exactly what they need or want. Um, this one is the most exciting slide for me to share with you. So this is the result, these are the results of our study. Um, so the t it's a little busy, but let me walk you through it. It's um, showing the top is the QMG score, so the change from the beginning of 
when patients didn't receive our study drug till the 12 week period ended. And then um, in the, uh, the bottom is the ADL score. So the blue line represents placebo patients and then the red line represents patients who are on our high dose um, Xyluca plan. And what you see is that even within one week, you see a big drop of their QMG score, which is a good thing. A drop, uh, a reduction in your score is, uh, means that patients are feeling stronger and um, they're testing for um, a stronger muscle strength. And we saw that this continued over the 12 week period. And then what's interesting is next, what, uh, how the placebo patients also responded. So again, this is an average, but placebo patients who entered um, the long-term extension and received high-dose Xylucoplan also had a similar effect where their score dropped immediately and continued to improve. And we see similar effects and results in the ADL score. And also on the next slide, um, in the MG composite, and the quality of life score as well. So the blue line is placebo, high dose is the red line, and then this shows placebo patients tr um, transitioning into the high dose group, and then the high dose group um, continuing into from 12 weeks into their 24 week visits. So I think that's all great and everything, but I think probably for you as patients, you're wondering, well, what about the safety and tolerability? So what was really encouraging to us is that um, no patients in our high dose group required rescue therapy with IVIG or PLEX while they were on the 12 week study. Three or three patients or 20% of patients in the placebo arm did require that. And then in terms of any serious side effects or serious adverse events, we didn't have any that were deemed related to the study drug. And we did have a few common related adverse events or side effects um, like nausea or headache, some injection site reactions. Um, it is an injection, so um, we did expect to see some of that. But all of them were mild, and um, the only one that was moderate was actually in the placebo arm. So within that study, we still have not seen any infections with Neisseria meningitis. So all of our doctors are doing a great job um, giving those vaccine boosters. And um, all of our 44 patients completed the study. We didn't have anyone come off the study early. And 42 out of 44 patients decided to go into that open label extension. So this is where I wanted to show you a quick slide about our phase three study that's open to enrollment. It's very similar to our phase two study design. And the only things that have really changed are we added um, an eligibility criteria of having an ADL score of six or higher. And that's because um, the FDA really cares about what patients think about while they're on a study drug. It may work great, but how do they feel? And so that's actually our primary endpoint for this phase three global study where we're um, looking at the change from the um, baseline to the week 12 ADL score. And that's all I have for you today. Thank you.